This story takes place deep in the forests of the taiga. Fedor, an experienced hunter, knows the area around him perfectly well. Throughout his life, he has been able to catch a variety of game both small and large animals. He always follows the rules of hunting and does not abuse them, keeping an eye out for the seasons and never giving in to poaching. He became a hunter for a reason. As a child, he grew up in the city and graduated from veterinary college, but then lost his job and his family needed him to provide for them. So he decided at least to bring home some of his catch. Since childhood, his grandfather had taught him how to use a gun and let him hunt. At first, it was just for entertainment, but eventually it became a necessity. Eventually, his wife also disapproved of him going on frequent walks in the woods and eventually left him. The man left his apartment for his wife and son, Agor. He then went to the place he felt most comfortable to the taiga, to live in his grandfather's house. He had always been attracted to the forest because several generations of his ancestors had been famous hunters. When Agor grew up, Fyodor decided to take him with him and his wife agreed because she realized that father and son spent time together. Agor stayed at his father's hunting cabin all summer. He was happy that his son shared his passion for hunting as well. Their lives continued as usual. On one day, while Fyodor was on a trip to a nearby village, he decided to cross the river along the well-known path. The ice appeared to be solid but Fyodor stayed vigilant and noticed something trembling in the distance. He decided to go closer to see if the creature needed help, and to his surprise, it was a wolf. The predator had hidden under the water, only revealing its head above the surface. The wolf's paws caught on the edge of the ice floe and his eyes were closed, as if he had already exhausted all his strength and accepted his fate. The water around him turned into ice. Fyodor pulled out a knife and started to break the ice around the wolf. Then he carefully lifted it to the surface. From the outside, the animal seemed dead. But as a vet, Fedor knew that seeing pupils could mean life. He took out his flashlight and lifted the wolf's eyelids, letting the light shine into its eyes. Immediately, the pupils narrowed in the bright light. So it's alive, thought Fyodor. He tied the wolf to his back and started walking back to his house. Each step became harder, because the animal weighed around 60 to 70 kilograms, and his legs were already refusing to obey. However, Fyodor didn't give up hope, because this wasn't just about hunting. This was about saving an animal in trouble. Fyodor moved slowly and reached his house accompanied by these thoughts. He placed the wolf near the stove and covered it with an old blanket, changing his clothes himself to avoid getting sick, as he was soaked through. Then, he began to heat the wolf and restore its circulation. Fyodor poured hot water in jars and placed them on the paws of the animal, then covered him with a blanket. After a while, the wolf started breathing clearly. Fyodor was tired and wanted to sleep, but tried not to let himself succumb to slumber, thinking about what would happen when the wolf woke up. After all, it was still a predatory animal. In the meantime, Fedor warmed up and fell asleep anyway. He woke up from a crash, opened his eyes, and saw the wolf had knocked over the chair and was staring at him, confused about where he was. He opened his mouth, the wolf let out a loud growl, but it only jumped up on its front paws, slightly raising itself. Fyodor realized that its hind legs were completely exhausted. Apparently, they had been frozen in the icy water. Fedor started taking care of it watering, feeding, and massaging the wolf's rear legs, carefully. Over time, Fyodor gained the animal's trust. It willingly accepted food and water from him. Fedor moved the wolf to a barn so it would be easier for him and the hunter would feel calmer. During all that time, he kept massaging its rear legs and the animal began to stand on all fours and walk a little, though stumbling. Agor came for the holidays just before the end of summer. He brought different vitamins for the animal, and it slowly recovered. It's funny, but as soon as Agor arrived, the beast allowed him to approach. Agor continued to massage just like his father had done. By the end of summer, the wolf had already been actively running and playing with Agor. 
It lived in the yard and slept on the porch. However, in the end of August the wolf climbed over the fence and ran away into the forest. What can we do? The wolf will always be a wolf. He loves freedom, said his father to Agor. In the winter holidays Agor also visited his father. He had already become an adult, turning 15. They had great fun hunting small game and wandering through the snowy forest. One sunny day the father instructed his young son to go into the village to buy food. However before they left the father warned him strongly, it would be necessary to cross the river on the old bridge this year, because the long-awaited thaw had come and the ice on the river was unstable. Restless Agor, not wanting to waste time on a long detour, decided to go straight through the icy path. The young researcher believed that nothing terrible would happen, because such a path turned out to be noticeably shorter than the path across the bridge. As he advanced, the ice painfully bent under his feet, and the sound of air cracking was a universal warning. But the boy could not stand ordinary limitations and risk life by moving forward randomly. And now came the moment when the thin layer of ice could no longer support him and gave way, leaving small Agor under a noisy stream. Soaked clothes seemed to toss around the child's body in the darkness, leading towards the inevitable end. Cold took his breath away, and his slight body sank further and further, bound by the incredibly cold embrace. But at the most crucial moment, Agor spotted the friendly figure of a genuine wolf, gray as a shadow. From just one glance at him, the boy felt hope had returned. The wolf, who recognized their friendship from his father, wasted no time and grabbed the child by the collar as it rose to the surface. Its bright eyes shone like a beacon of rescue in a sea of darkness. Saved from drowning, Agor understood that an additional moment in icy water could be fatal to him. He understood that it was essential to run home at once to escape the vicious frost. At maximum speed, the youngster charged forward, feeling the support of the wolf, which ran alongside him at every step, steadfastly escorting him to the doorstep of the house like an overseer on special duty. A well-deserved rest awaited little Agor in the warm comfort of his cozy home. When his father saw his wet and beaten son, he guessed what had happened. Looking at the emotional bond between the young one and the wolf, he experienced a mixture of approval and gratitude. After one last look at his sons, the wolf disappeared rapidly into the depths of the forest. They were left with an unforgettable and thrilling memory. Dear friends, if you like the video, please like it and also subscribe to our channel where we post author stories every day.